Welcome. This is Doc's Office Hours. It's the 20th of June, or June 20th of May, 2022. This is Asia Office Hours. Thanks for joining. Top topics I had are disabling the Doc's mailing list, uh, switch to community.jenkins.io, this is a topic from governance, localization, oops, localization and internationalization progress report, something we discussed in Europe office hours uh, 12 or so hours ago. June LTS change log, the required Java 11 epic and its timeline, she code Africa contribute on and then outdated pull requests. Meg, you will be pleased to note last meeting, we closed some outdated pull requests on Jenkins.io. Not many, but we closed a few. Any other topics you wanna to put on the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So this next, this one, the first one is one that needs some, some quick conversation. So we use, we use a mailing list on Google Groups and it's a very infrequently used mailing list for docs. I suspect most people do not read it. Uh, as an example, we had a post from Basil Crow. The preceding post was four days ago. So it's maybe on average one post a month, maybe two posts a month is all. And not a lot of response to it. Most posts have no response whatsoever. So, so given that we're not getting responses there and it sort of fractures where we're communicating, the proposal is let's move or move, let's switch and use community.jenkins.io and put things under the SIG docs category or SIG docs label like these items are. So what we would do is declare the docs mailing list still available as content, but switch it to read only. So it would not accept new posts. I may put, I would put one email message there which says this, this mailing list has stopped and it's being pointed to this tag in, in community.jenkins.io. So Meg and Kristen, would you be okay with that? I assume that for you, this mailing list is not a crucial source of information, et cetera. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm yeah, I haven't really looked at the mailing list. Right. I don't think so. <laughs> well, and, and that's that's most of us, truthfully. Right. Yeah. I pay more attention to either like definitely Gitter first, and then mm -hmm. the then the community Jenkins.io, just because at least with the Gitter, I can usually if I'm have my tabs open, I can see if there's a notification. So it's a little bit easier sometimes for me to do it than you know clicking into the community Jenkins.io. So having reducing the number of places where we sit be easier for everyone i think good okay so so that that works well for me that gives gives me a chance meg are you okay with the idea then as well we'll we'll plan to shut down jenkins documentation as a mailing list and direct people towards posts there on community.jenkins.io and i'm going to assume silence means yes meg all right, so good, noted. Means I coughed and muted and didn't unmute. Yes, but ah, it was not okay. silence, it was, I agree totally, that makes total sense. Great, all right. And we had, we, I missed having the, having the conversation during Europe office, office hours, but I'd had the conversation with the governing board uh, the day prior and it had several of the attendees, Bruno and Basel, we're already in attendance at the governance board. So I think we've got, we've got more than enough people agreed that we'll do that. Good. Anything else on the docs mailing list topic? No, not here. Okay, so next topic is localization and internationalization. The Crowdin uh, project that we've started, crowdin.jenkins.io now has eight plugins on it. Huh. So, and we've got uh, French localizations uh, submitted by Bruno for all eight. 
and easy pull, and pull requests submitted for those localizations. So really positive. Now, what we've got upcoming is Mark and Darren will host a live stream. We'll do a live stream, live stream on internationalizing Jenkins plugins. Uh, this will be the sixth in the, what do we call it? Modernizing a Jenkins plugin. video series and this will be then be will be embedded eventually on www.jenkins.io okay any questions or concerns there now one of the one of the topics that we noted in in the europe office hours today was we've got a challenge here that we would really like it if we could use language translation as a Hacktoberfest contribution. Oh. I think it'd be, it's cool. It worked very nicely last year when Duchess France, a group of, of women open source contributors in France contributed several localization improvements. However, the, uh, the system submits the pull requests as a bot rather than submitting them as the person who, who did the, the translation or the proofreading. Mm. And so I've got to check with our, our leader there, Alex Brandes, to see if there's some way to switch that for the period of Hacktoberfest so that the pull requests are submitted by the, by the translator as though they were the translator. I'm not sure it's possible because it may require credentials that CrowdIn actually does not have. Ah. Um, back to the previous one, what exactly do you mean by embedding this in, uh, in Jenkins IO, the instruction, the, the video and the instructions, I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Good, good question. So what I mean is something like this, let's show an example. So on Jenkins.io, we have uh, a number of places where something is described and we've found that Darren had created a video and we use Darren's video by placing it on the page like this. Okay. Um, where, I don't know, where is that? You were doing massive work on uh, pipeline development documentation at one point. What is the status of that? Yeah, so that, that pull request is stale right now. It still exists as a pull request, but it's still draft and not really ready not ready to merge because I've I've not made had not had time to make progress on it. It's this pull request right here, number okay. four eight zero six, and it has a number of videos embedded in it, and you see a whole bunch of comments there on what with Jesse Glick saying, "Wow, this is a lot. I'll need to have some time to go over it." Yeah. Do we? Um, is is there a section on internationalization? Is my question. Not yet. There okay. will be. Well, I'm like, oh no, is that going to be another thing that we'd have to, it's going to make it even harder to be able to get a review? If no, we add another because, section? well, it doesn't have to go into this section. Ultimately, okay. we can, we can, we can declare this thing done right now. I'm not ready to say this is done because the development okay. work that I want to do is not done. Okay. And okay. I've actually got authority to, all I have to, I suspect all I have to do is tell, um, tell um, Gavin Mogan here, Hawkeye, Give me an approval. He says yes, and I'll merge it. Okay. But the problem okay. is, it's not ready because I'm not ready to have it have it reviewed yet. I don't mind if Jesse if Jesse finds problems with it later, we'll just fix them. You know, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. I was just like, oh no, I didn't want to turn it into oh, I just reviewed everything. Now I gotta reread no, it. No, like, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely not not the case here. Yeah, okay. I wonder about it, even if there's pieces or I mean, the old, the existing docs that has has so many really important sections that just say this needs to be written up. Yes, yes. And why, you know, the stuff that isn't ready or even say this has not been reviewed or this- Work in progress or yeah, like well, under and, construction. And, and we don't even have to do those. This, this material, I'm perfectly comfortable saying, hey, I tested it. It's not a work in progress Yeah. in, in the sense okay. that I've checked that these steps work for me. And if someone else finds a problem, they can report a bug. 
So now we do have instructions right now on how to do internationalization. So we've got instructions that tell you how to internationalize Java source code and Jelly views and uh, Groovy views. However, I disagree with or find them in, find found them inadequate personally because they use a technique that is not conducive to crowd in. Ah, okay. And okay. and I think it's much better if we teach people if you'll do this, your life is easier as a Java developer, mm -hmm. and our life is easier because translators' life is easier because they get to use crowd in instead of having to create handcraft all the property files themselves right what is going to happen long term once let's say we get everything internationalized we don't, but let's say something has been internationalized and then there's significant updates to it um will it be easy to go in and just um internationalize the new parts or review everything and do that or yeah i think that, i think that stuff that isn't localized or I think that Crowdin has a facility that will tell you that an upstream, an original string has changed and okay. will then invalidate the downstream translation. I haven't tested it, but it's a good question. Let me make a note to myself to be sure that we test that workflow because I'm so pretty sure we've, we've, we've had an exact example of that. And we forget there's a future here. Uh huh. Right. Good idea. So that the, that Crowdin Certainly the current tooling without crowd in make it very, very difficult to detect that problem. Uh, right. Detects changes in the base string and invalidates the, or, or requests a new translation of the revised message. Man, I used to work with this fellow. I really liked him, really respected him. And he was really big on having tests for everything. Is there any possibility of pulling, making crowd in part of the CI process when one merges something that it would flag up and say, hey, there's stuff here that hasn't been localized? Actually, it-, it That would be that, really that helpful. Already happens. So, okay. so let's, let's, well, maybe what I can show you is let's look at, at a okay. plugin that has, okay. is now part of crowd in. So here's this crowd in this crowd in enabled plugin elastic access. Okay. And what happened was when new strings arrived, when new strings became visible, uh, they were made visible in crowd in and then crowd in received translation proposal from, in this case, from um, Alex Brandes in German, he proposed, Hey, here's the translation. And uh, when you say crowd in, did crowd in on its own without Alex saying, hey, would you check this? Crowd yes, in it, on its own just popped up and said, hey. It did, that's correct. So every every 12 hours, crowd in checks for new changes in GitHub. Oh. So it's it, it looks like this. Here we go, we'll bring it up and, and get to look at it. So for me, here are these, here are these projects. And the plug plugin we were just looking at on Jenkins is this Elastic Access plugin. Ah. And so it says, hey, it's been translated to Chinese Simplified, Chinese Traditional, French, and a portion of the German and some of the Italian. Sono io che ho fatto italiano, non, non si va. <laughs> so yes, that was me who did the Italian. No, it's not really good Italian. <laughs> but so, so this gives hints. And so you see, Who's involved? So this is Alex. That's Bruno. This is Chris Stern in um, in Hong Kong. Oh. oh, very nice. Yeah, it's actually quite a quite a, a comfortable user interface. Now, now it's it's still we would love many many more. We're still in the early adoption phase. We haven't, for instance, put Jenkins Core on there yet. We think there is much more work that we can do in plugins to become comfortable with it, familiar with it, before we do something massive like Jenkins Core, or even like the Git plugin or the Git client plugin that are high volume plugins. We wanna be sure that these lower volume, somewhat safe plugins are easy to do and work well before we go with big high volume plugins that are used frequently. Right. 
Did, did that answer your question? It did, and I'm so impressed. Yeah, so, so back to your thing on detecting changes in the bass string, we just had an episode, had a case in Jenkins Core. Now it's not crowd in enabled yet, but in Jenkins Core where a string, a translated string had been updated, but the, the translations had not been invalidated. And because of that, Local, localized users receiving bad information. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the case was, we're announcing the um, end of Java 8 support. We changed the date, oh. the date to June, 20, June 21. But the problem is the localized versions still said the old date. Ah. And, and so we corrected that by deleting the by deleting the translations. Okay. So that they'll now show German or show English language again. And if you care, the first item in this thing, you left out string, you had a translated had been updated. Right, or a tran oh, a translated string. Thank you. There you go. Thanks. Okay. Everybody's a copy editor. Uh, that's great. Okay, so anything else on localization? I hadn't actually intended to spend so much time on it. Thanks for your that. patience. Okay, LTS changelog has been has been created uh, by Kevin Martins. He and I paired up to do it. It needs needs review um, and needs needs a blog post announcing the major major changes that are included in the June June LTS. Yes, Kevin and could do that too. He's working on the blog post. Yeah. All right. Anything else on that change log? Nope. Okay, next is the require Java 11 epic. So, so beginning June 21, Jenkins will stop delivering a Java 8, a Java 8 based Jenkins. We will switch to Java 11. Ooh. And uh, then in September, we'll do the same change in the long-term support release. We've got a bunch of, a bunch of work described in the JIRA epic, uh, a bunch of work happening in, for instance, various sub projects of this thing, like the Jaxby one, that there, there are plenty of things that still work is going on, but we feel like it's, it's reaching the point where we've been running on Java 11 for, I think, over two years. It's time now for us to switch off Java 8 and be able to use Java 11 features natively. Wonderful. Yeah. Any questions there? Makes me feel old. I remember the the hackathon where you guys were just starting to play with implementing java 11 yes yeah it will and and there's there's a that that transition feels about like this one does in terms of finding things that have changed and making sure that we can safely make this transition for our users so an awful lot of work going into making java 11 work successfully yeah all right if nothing else on Java 11, Shikode Africa Contributathon is now in the reporting phase. So that means three projects, inclusive naming, pipeline help, and screenshot update. And so the, the seven women, oh, and project management. The seven women involved in the project will be posting their, their final reports to community.jenkins.io and that will look like this. So if we look for She Code Africa, what we see here is, for instance, this is from Peace Okafor. Um, and she posted introduction, summary of the camp, um, good, good story told, 
problems she encountered and things she learned from the experience and what we should do better next time. And that's exactly what we were hoping for. Very nicely done and have, have suggested that the other new contributors do the same. That's really it for what I had there. So sample, let's see. So in terms of which projects work well, the screenshot update and the inclusive naming went quite well. Pipeline help was a struggle, but the two contributors there have found some new things that they taught me and and have been contributing as well so like the fact that it's not just us teaching them they're rather helping us learn more things and see how to do things more effectively that's fabulous it is really pleased any other topics that you we want to talk today we've got outdated pull requests and we could spend the rest of our time together on on outdated pull requests okay i have to leave in about 10 minutes but we can do 10 minutes and Okay. You guys can continue or get a 20 minute break. <laughs> well, and, and I'm fine if we if we say, hey, we're done. I'm happy to look at, I think Kristen, you and I had a really good experience the last time we did this. Do you wanna try it again? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay. So this is truly group exercise, trying to decode which of these long ago pull requests should remain open. Right. <laughs> and so last time we were able to successfully close. Two, okay, here's 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 one that I cannot close because I'm actively working on it. Oh, okay. Well, there uh -huh. we go. <laughs> but this one, the next one up from June of 2020, um, documentation for an environment when with comparator. This is conditioned on this, this pull request being merged. And it, it hasn't been merged and it has conflicts now. So I think we could safely close this one. Well, who was doing, so was that soft, was that, is it, we get software and documentation for it? We, we have, we have a pull request, but it's not been merged. And because it's not been merged and the pull request is now two years old. <clears throat> but is is why has this not i want to know why this hasn't been merged i mean should it have been merged or is it uh, i i, I think did. it's because the maintainers are not ready to review it ah so this oh. is a, a plug-in feature request and and but it, yeah just, and that's from 2019 it's even older right right, or, right. Yeah. late late 2019 this is victor martinez who submitted it and and I think it's a very reasonable thing, but until this is until this thing is merged, there is no reason for us to leave that thing open. I'm just going to propose we close it. It doesn't, it doesn't get lost, it's just closed. And, and we'll if it were to be merged, it would again? be oh yes, it's easy to find because he references the pull request uh -huh. in in the software change. Um, pull request description. So this thing is a link to the documentation. Okay, and the software stays open, right? Just the document. Exactly. I, I don't have any authority to close that. So yeah. I'm closing this until can reopen when the um, when the matching software pull request is merged. Fair enough. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so we've made progress of one. Okay, oh, another one from Victor. All right, so, and this one I suspect has the same. I was wondering the same, I was like, I bet this is something similar. It is the same condition, right? So let's. Follow the same pattern, closing for now, once reopen, reopen once the matching 
software change is implemented. Let's just be sure that it doesn't damage this pull request. Yeah, it, show, it changed the color of the icon, but that's all. Okay. All right, now we've got changes requested on this one and this one that have had no action. The, the action would then be someone else has to adopt them, pick them up, make the requested changes and then apply them. And likewise for this one, this one, this one. So then we've got a vocabulary update proposed here that's been put on hold and another vocabulary update proposed will put on hold. Oh, the job and project one. Oh God. That exactly. Yep. Oh, that is oil and water, religious. Precisely. That that is it kind was like a, a pipeline and a workflow right there, right? <laughs> uh, actually, it's it's I think even more contentious than pipeline Ooh. and workflow. I remember that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's the I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, does how does the community I get the feeling that the community, is, except for the writers, is very comfortable with the fact that we misuse, that we have all this terminology that we use different ways and different times. And yeah, well, what what there are, I, what I would phrase it is that there are there are people who are very precise in their phrasing, and their preci precision in phrasing is related to the to the Jenkins object model, and then there are people who are precise in their phrasing. And it's their precision in phrasing is di in disagreement with those who are precise with the Jenkins object model because they're precise in their phrasing in terms of the way users use the words. That's, that's been my discussion with Tim Jacome on this one anyway, is job and project. Um, those have very, very precise meanings in the Jenkins object model. And one of them is a better choice than the other. And yet users use the word job. <laughs> They just do, whether we like it or not. Right. And they don't care what the inheritance tree is exactly. in the in the Jenkins source code. They use the word job to describe it. And what, when talking about it- What my problem always was with it was that all of this was set in concrete before they came up with pipelines. I, I, again, same, same thing that their pipeline, they still call it a job. Right. Yeah. So, but then when I get into something like the um security matrix when it talks about jobs I, I think some of that only applies to freestyle and some of it applies to pipelines and it's it's very very but yeah there's you know yeah well but but wouldn't that disambiguate with a pipeline job and a freestyle job so isn't isn't that a way that we could terminology wise disambiguate by right, saying yeah. well, I they're all jobs? Go into that of course because we never really documented those different things very well anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, but that they should have been split up. That you know this applies to both pipelines and freestyle, and this only applies to freestyle, and this you know or something like that. But we yeah. don't go back and get other pieces like that. But. And I feel a lot of sympathy towards the people who are using it from the context of what the user says, because that's kind of, most people are not going into the deep bowels of Jenkins to understand right. the inheritance. So it's very, it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. valid point. Now, I just realized we've got Meg for maybe two or three more minutes. Oh, okay. and I think there is one candidate here that we may be able to close and it would be one that fits with Meg very well. Ooh, okay. Meg converted the agent to master access control to GitHub is a, I believe now dead, right? Because there isn't really anything about agent to master control from the wiki that is relevant. This, oh. this wiki data, right? Agent to master access control, as far as I know anyway, is they there's no switch anymore, right? There is just no switch. 
uh-uh, not even off the, at first I thought it was just on the GUI, but you can't turn that off. Right. It's th this, oh, it's sure always on. Or some people can figure out how to turn it off, but we're never going to document it. Right. Well, and, and yeah, it's not intended to be switched off as far as I know. Right. You, if you choose to turn it off, you're disabling a major security feature. Yes. So I propose we close this one because agent to master access control is really always on now. Who is Larry Soul and where is he? He's in Nigeria. Okay. And was he attempted to contribute this conversion um, back in 2020. So it was June of 2020, I think, as part of the UI UX hack, hack fest that we did okay. in May or June. Yeah, it was May of 2020. So it's now so been be two years ago. He won't oh, be no. hurt. No. no. Looks like a candidate. Can no longer be disabled. Yes, exactly. Is uh -huh. is cannot be disabled. From the UI. I have no there. idea if there's a property escape hatch, but good. Yeah. Okay. We have now successfully closed three and Meg, let's call ourselves done okay. because that way we've we've hit your times timeline. Kristen, and thank you very much fine. as well. Yes, I have three. That's a really good number. We were getting those numbers down. Right. <laughs> well, and, and we're down to only 33 open, and several of these are screenshot updates that awesome. may merge pretty quickly. So we we might get down to not we we won't be down to one page, but we're getting much closer. Cool. Um and that GSOC announcements, um, are those gonna be on uh, Jenkins Scuzzy tomorrow? They they after Google makes them and makes the announcement publicly, yeah. then uh, www.jenkins.io will get a blog post, etc. that says more details. Yeah. Okay, just curious. So. Great. Yeah. Check check Jenkins.io for the announcement tomorrow. Terrific. Hey guys, have a great week. I'll, I feel bad I'm not doing anything with this meeting, but I look forward to seeing you guys every week. So. Well, it's great, yeah, to, sure. great to see you and thanks for your help with closing pull requests and reviewing them. Thanks, sure. Meg. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye, y'all.